Here we are, the end of February, actually third week of February in Wisconsin. And this is a winter that we didn't have except for about 16 inches for a couple of weeks. That was great for snowshoeing and cross country skiing. It's time to get back out in the garden. Just wanted to share with you some of the practices that I've found over the last 40 years have made my life easier. One of them is letting some perennials just go until they're just easier to clean up. For years, I used to go in there and clean up the hosta, cut them back, trim them. And it's very time consuming to do that in the fall. And I found it's easier just to let everything freeze, rot, and then I can come in here and I can clean this up in minutes versus hours. I can either come in here with a rake and pull this stuff up or I can uh, um, just go in there by hand and pull it up and it's one, two, three versus coming in here with pruners and clean that up. Doesn't matter whether it's praying hands on this side or it's uh, some of the halcyons and other varieties that I have over here. So those will be cleaned up. Last year I cut black, back the black lace elderberry hard. I didn't cut back the hydrangea just as a little bit of an experiment this year. I usually cut it partially back in the fall just to prevent snow damage. But what I want to share here is that if you get down here, you can see there's no damage from any rabbits or mice eating any of this bark. And that's because I um, sprayed that with liquid fence last fall and again this winter <laughs> when we didn't have any snow. And now I'm gonna come in here and I'll prune this uh, probably in the next couple of weeks while it's still warm out here. But the hydrangea, they get knocked down with the wet snow we've had and then they pop back up. Had a little bit of wind damage. This is the northwest corner of the house and uh, the wind blew over this metal trellis. So I have to take care of that. The Clumner Hornbeam, looking great. Love this tree. If you're looking for a tree that you want some height in your garden around your house, this Clumner Hornbeam, let me go over here, is a great <coughs> tree. Gets maybe 15 feet wide. It gets very tall, doesn't get damaged by wind. These grasses the last couple of year, years, I've just left them. I've cleaned up, I'll go in here and I'll clean up any dead grass and cut them back a little bit, but um, they should be <laughs> good to go. As you can tell, I've got to clean up the edge here. We've got metal edging in here, but every year I go in and clean that up. We'll be making a video. The allium starting to push. In here, it's a really early plant. I'll clean these grasses up. Got to uh, thin out this flowering crab. A couple big dead branches in here, but I'll thin that out. If you look going over on this side, big bed of daylilies in here. Um, clean, cut some back last year, but I'll clean these daylilies up. We've got some dwarf lilacs here. I will probably prune these after they bloom because they bloom in the spring and they bloom on old wood. I'll clean those up after they bloom this year. Over here, it's creeping phlox, as bad as it looks right now. I've sprayed this multiple times. Keeps the voles, the moles, the rabbits from eating it during the winter. So that'll come along. Got some false indigo, these big plants right here. They'll push out nice. Had a little bit of damage early last fall on this um, on this sumac. You can see the deer came in here and really uh, damaged this branch. I'll probably have to cut that whole branch off. I may cut it back at the base. That's one thing I like about uh, the sumac is you can make it into an art form. It's really a sculpture um, and I like doing that. In here, a lot of Valium that we gotta push out. Once again, you can see the edging, but that gets cleaned up every year, but it's not as cumbersome as putting a new edge on with a shovel every year. So plants overall are looking good. Let's check one more over here. Sculptures always do well in the winter. Now this bed does not have metal edging on it. I clean this up just with a spade and that works well on this planting bed. Got climbing hydrangea, which is also sprayed in the winter to keep any varmints from eating the thin bark with all the nutrients on it. They love eating that up. So I gotta clean these, day, these daylilies up 
but it's one, two, three. We've got a whole forest of Asiatic lilies in here that will be uh, pushing out. And then one really big black lace elderberry in here. You just cut it back hard, it pushes out, and this will be six, eight feet tall and six, eight feet wide next year, or next year, this season. So plants are all doing well here in the front gardens. <laughs> um, we'll look in the back and see what's going on back there. All right, and the south facing uh, gardens, completely different microclimate. It's probably 10, 15 degrees warmer out here in the sun than on the north side of the garden. We've got these raised beds I've got to pay some attention to this year, bring some more uh, compost in and redo some of these herbs and stuff that are in here completely dripped. And then over in this garden, I use these raised planters for my tomato plants. I've got some cages that I'll put in there. And I've got to, it's that time of year, I've just got to clean out the um, uh, cold frame here. Couldn't think of that word for a minute. Clean out the cold frame. And you can see it's already got stuff growing in there just from seeds that was there from last year, arugula. And it's got a wax hinge on there, which automatically raises. You can see it's only 38 degrees out right now, but it automatically raises the hinge so you don't have to adjust that all the time. Most expensive part of the cold frame was that hinge. Got daylilies to clean up here, cut back the um, ornamental grasses that surround this uh, power uh, transformer here. Clematis, usually what I do is I'll cut the clematis in the spring about a foot off the ground and then leave most of the vegetation there for the new clem uh, clematis to climb and grow up there. Daylilies here on the south side, obviously pushing. We've got some uh, Nippon daisies growing here and some great uh, uh, grasses behind that and another large clematis. Lavenders that I thought were dead last year that I cut back to nothing that we'll see how they come back. And then Taurus birea. Taurus birea. If I don't spray deer off or liquid fence on them, the deer will just mow them down. You see on the back part of the property here, I can have 10, 15, biggest is 27 <laughs> deer at a time. <laughs> Excuse me, getting over cold here. 27 deer at a time down here along the woods. And they don't come up here during the day, but they will come up here at night. So we got the Taurus spirea that are sprayed. Got a hydrangea underneath that one wind sculpture back there. That pushes out nice. And then these great grasses and some grasses on this hill. And then just a holding yard for some plants that I'm going to be using on the other side over here this spring when I make a new planting bed. I'm going to be dividing up a lot of these daylilies over here. It's like three or four varieties in here. And um, I'll be able to make as many as I want out of here, actually. And the outdoor kitchen in between the pole barn and the house. You can see the blue <coughs> sunscreen rolled up against the pole barn. That'll come out. And then that'll all be set up with chairs and outdoor plants and uh, stuff for the summer. So spring is just around the corner. I've got my Costco uh, table out here. It's a tile table that I put rigid insulation on and then put this cover on it. I never have, have any problems with it cracking. I have a lot of annual containers they put out here. Solo stove is... Um, I leave out all winter because I can have a fire out here. Stays clean. And I have some new ones of these. These are two or three years old. I leave them out in the winter. They're not that costly, maybe $60. But I, <coughs> these are at least three or four years old. I've got a couple of new ones in the garage. So it's almost springtime. <laughs> it's a little scary that it's so warm out here <laughs> on uh, February 22nd. Said I'm just getting over a little bit of cold, no COVID, just a little bit of a cold. And uh, that's it. So this is Getting Dirty with Glenn. Remember, remember to lead with love and kindness, and I will see you out in the garden.